Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today I will um, offer you a couple of problems, uh, solutions actually with, uh, uh, to these problems. Um, these are very, very simple things. It's just the beginning of the limits and uh, the problems actually with solutions are on the website unizor.com so you can read it not only listening to me but just read it from uh, from the website itself. Um, so again these are very simple problems however their importance is in approach basically because the question is how do you prove that some sequence has certain limit. So there are certain approaches to this and uh, I would like to illustrate these approaches using these very very simple problems. So I have five problems here so I will do it once one at a time. The problem number one, you have uh, a sequence of these fractions. Now, question is, does it have a limit? And if it does, what is this limit? Well, obviously, everybody understands that if denominator goes to infinity, basically, as an increasing, then the fraction, which has a fixed uh, numerator, should go down to zero. And it does. So let me just show, let me prove, actually, that zero is a limit of this sequence, not just intuitively, but mathematically, according to whatever the logic and definitions we have. So let's recall what is a definition of a limit. If you have a sequence, elements are a nth, then the limit of this sequence as n increasing to infinity is some kind of a uh, number L, which means that the distance between the limit and elements would be less than any d if n is greater than some capital N, which we found depending on d. So the smaller the d actually is, the larger probably the n should be, but what's important is that once uh, this particular sequence gets into the distance of less than d from its limit, then it stays this way. So for all n, uh, lowercase n greater than capital N, which we have found, uh, this particular inequality will hold. Now, if I'm claiming that zero is the limit of that thing, then for any d, whatever the d I find, I should find such a number, capital N, that after the order number of our sequence elements is greater than this capital N, this particular inequality would hold. So, L is equal to zero. Now, one N, I should find N when this is actually held. Well, that's very uh, easy. Uh, zero minus uh, one nth absolute value is equal to one nth. So one nth should be less than uh, less than d. I can invert inequality, uh, and that means that I have to change the sign from less than to greater, uh, and that would be one over d. So it looks like for any n greater than 1 over d, our inequality would hold, because these are completely invariant transformations. From this follows this, which means that I can choose n equals to next integer after 1 over d. But 1 over d is some kind of a fraction, probably, or whatever it is, depending on d, and n is integer, so the next integer after that, as long as it's greater than 1 over d, so it's the next integer which is greater than 1 over d, would actually fit uh, our definition, because for any lowercase n which is greater than this one, this would be satisfied, and that's why this would be satisfied, which means 0 is a limit. 
we found for any G, we have found the number n after which all sequence elements will be within the G distance from, from its limit. That's the problem number one. Now, what's the kind of lesson which I would like um, you to learn from this particular proof? Go from the definition. That's very important to start what is the definition of limit in this particular case. Well, actually, it's very important in, in any kind of a discussion. If two people have different opinion, first of all, they should discuss the definition of what they're talking about. If this definition is different, if one is talking about apples and another is talking about uh, oranges, and one is saying that this is hard and this is uh, soft, then obviously they will not be able to, to agree about anything. So they have to talk about the definition first. So we started from the definition of the limit, and then we proved that whatever we have proposed as a limit actually is a limit indeed. Now, similar problem. 1 over 2, 2 over 3, etc., n over n plus 1, etc. So that's the sequence I'm talking about. Now, I uh, state that the limit of this as n goes to infinity is equal to 1. Now, intuitively, it's obvious. Why? Because n over n plus 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. That's obvious, right? n plus 1 times 1, so it's n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1, so it's n over n plus 1. Now, what it means is that the limit of n over n plus 1 is equal to the limit of n, uh, 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. Now, we have learned from the previous lectures that the limit of sum of two sequences is equal to sum of their limits, if, there, if, if these limits exist, if all three limits exist. Now, in this particular case, 1 is not really a sequence but a constant, but we can always consider any constant as a, a sequence of these constants repeating itself. So it's 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is another uh, sequence which we have already examined in the previous uh, problem. It's a sequence of uh, inverse integer numbers, nat natural numbers. So I can safely limit of 1 minus limit of 1 over n, n plus 1. Now, this is obviously 1. This is 0, as we have proven in the previous theorem. And basically, that's enough to, uh, as a proof that the whole limit is equal to 1. Now, a different proof, obviously, can be um, suggested where I explicitly go from the definition. So let's talk again about definition. So what I have to find out is that for any g greater than 0, that's the distance from the limit, I have to examine absolute value of 1 minus. If I will find such a capital N that this would be true if lowercase n is greater than capital N, then that would prove that 1 is a limit. So we have chosen D. Now we can find such a capital N that this particular inequality is true for all lowercase n greater than capital N. Well, let's again do some kind of transformation, invariant transformation of this inequality. Let's just basically solve it for N. Now, if I will convert this, it would be n plus 1 minus n over n plus 1 absolute value, which is equal to 1 over n plus 1, and it should be less than d, right? Well, obviously, again, we inverse uh, the sign of inequality, and we come to conclusion of this. So, if I will choose capital N 
which is equal to the next integer after 1 over d minus 1, then for all lowercase n greater than this capital n, this would be satisfied because all these transformations are invariant. So it's exactly the same, basically, theorem, just proven differently. First, I proved using the limit of the difference between two uh, sequences, and this is a, a direct proof uh, based on definition of, of what actual limit is. So that's problem number two. Next. Do all sequences have, prob uh, have limits? Well, here is an example of a sequence which does not have a limit, and we can prove it. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, 1, etc., which is basically minus 1 to the nth degree. That's what it is. So the sign is changing all the time. Now, does this sequence have a limit? Well, obviously everybody understands that no matter what kind of number we choose as a supposed limit, we will always find members of this particular sequence further than that number by whatever, I don't know, by, by, by any distance actually, relatively small distance obviously. Let's choose a distance of, let's say, 1. So, and then take any number, number a, as a proposed limit. Now, if d is equal to 1, question is, do we have some number n such that this would be less than d, or d equals to 1 in this case, for all n greater than n? Well, let's think about it. A can be either positive or negative, right? Now, if A is positive, then we do have uh, numbers minus 1 occurring anywhere in the sequence up to infinity. So no matter what number cho we choose, we will always find numbers minus 1 beyond that boundary n. Now, the number minus 1 is not uh, less than the distance d from any positive number a. So if a is greater than 0, as a result, no n after which all members of the sequence would be closer to the a and, uh, the, than d. Now, if a is less than 0, if a is negative, then the opposite. We have plus 1 here, 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 and here, again, up to infinity. So no matter what number, capital N, we choose, we will always have number uh, 1 as an element of this particular sequence. And the positive number 1 is on a greater distance from any negative number than 1. Well, and finally, if A is equal to 0, then obviously it's also not a, not, not a limit because it's on a, the same distance from 0 on both sides. All right, so there is no limit. That's it. So this is an example of a sequence which does not have a limit. All right, it's just for illustrative purposes because you obviously have to understand that there are different sequences. Some have limits, some don't. Um, there is a... Um, uh, th there might be actually a con confusion about certain um, monotonously increasing or decreasing sequences as the only one which have limit. That, that's not actually true, because I think I mentioned um, graphically, if these are 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., you can always consider these two curves and the numbers being on both sides. So this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, this is A4. They are closer and closer to zero, but they are not monotonously increasing or decreasing. They are jumping around this zero, but still have this particular zero as a limit. All right, that's again just for illustration. Uh, next, arithmetic progression. Does arithmetic progression have a limit? Well, the answer is no. 
and obviously we are adding something to a constant A, which means, again, on this particular graphic, if this is A, this is A1, A plus D, let's say D is this interval, you have A plus D, this is A plus 2D, etc. So the numbers are going to infinity, basically. For positive D, it goes to a plus infinity. For negative D, we are decreasing again by some uh, number, and it goes to negative in in infinity for negative difference. Uh, well, let's just ignore the uh, trivial case of D equals to zero. I mean, then, yes, obviously, arithmetic progression with difference equal to zero is basically a constant, so it, it does have a, zero, uh, um, a limit. Uh, so ignoring that particular case, in all other cases, positive or negative uh, difference d, arithmetic sequence does not have uh, a limit. Now, how can I prove it uh, more rigorously than just illustrating this as a graph? And again, our purpose is to just teach the technique of how to uh, prove these type of, type of things. Let's go from the definition. Definition is, let's assume that there is some limit. Let's say L is a limit of this sequence. Now, it means that L minus A plus N minus 1 D absolute value uh, should be less than Okay, there is a small confusion. The difference is uh, d in this case, and I, I, uh, I, I used to use d for a distance from the from the limit. So, as as a distance, let's let's use uh, uh, Greek letter delta. Okay, so delta is greater than zero, and this is a difference, the distance from this is the distance from. Uh, from the limit. So, for any delta greater than zero, I have to find number n such that if n is greater than capital N, this is true. Well, let's just think about it. For instance, for a second, that difference is positive. For the negative, it will be exactly the same thing. So, if distance is positive, so I, I really know that the sequence goes to infinity, which means if L is its limit, then what I'm saying is that L plus delta would be surpassed by adding sufficient number of D. I can prove actually is by finding the number after which it will be surpassed. So it will not be less than delta. It would be greater than delta. How can I find it? Well, I will just uh, solve this uh, inequality. This less than a plus n minus 1 d. Now, d is, again, positive number, we know about this, right? So I can solve this equation. How? The solution is l plus delta minus a less than n minus 1 d, right? And uh, now, since d is positive, I can divide both sides, and I'm getting n minus 1 greater than L plus delta minus A over D, where A is the beginning, D is the difference, delta is any distance I choose, and L is a proposed limit. So whatever the limit L is proposed, if N will be greater than, well, this fraction plus 1, 1 plus L plus delta minus A over D. So if uh, lowercase n will be greater than this number, then I will have this inequality. And this inequality means that the distance between the member of the uh, sequence and the L is greater than delta. It's above L plus delta. So no matter what delta I choose, I can find the number after which my sequence would exceed L plus delta. Now, if D is negative, 
just a slightly different logic, but exactly the same thing. Now, if D is negative, what I'm saying is I'm going down. I'm making my members less and less and less. So, but I'm saying this eventually my members for a negative D would be less than L minus delta. So delta is a positive distance from the L. So if my number is left to the left less than L minus delta, it means that the difference between uh, my uh, member of arithmetic progression and the uh, proposed limit L is greater than delta. Now, does this inequality um, has a solution? Well, let's try it. L minus 1 G less than L minus delta minus A. Now, let's remember that D is a negative number which means if I divide both sides by g, I should reverse the inequality. So I will get n minus 1 greater than L minus delta minus A over, over g. And n is, again, greater than this particular number. So if n is greater than this, these are invariant transformations, I will get this inequality, which means my arithmetic progression eventually gets small less than L minus delta, which means it's more than the delta distance from the proposed limit L. No matter what L I choose, no matter what delta I choose, I will always go beyond that particular limit. So there is no limit. That's my point. Arithmetic progression has no limit if the difference is uh, not zero. How about geometric progression? Well, in case of geometric progression, you have a, a q, a q square, etc., a q n minus one, etc. So that's the members. Now let's think about it. No matter what a is, if q is greater than one, you are multiplying some number by a factor which is greater than one which means we increase it. So this thing is increasing. And we're increasing it more and more and more. So that's why what I can say is that if q is greater than 1, or similarly less than minus 1, absolute value of q is greater than 1, then this uh, geometric progression does not converge. It does not have a limit. If, however, my q is less than 1 by absolute value, let's say it's 1 half, or something like this, we are decreasing A every time on multi multiplying the, the new member from the previous one by this particular Q, which is by absolute value less than 1. We are decreasing its absolute value. And obviously, it should go smaller and smaller and smaller down to 0. And 0 is actually a limit. So my preposition here is, if absolute value of Q is greater than 1, uh, uh, the geometric progression does not converge. If, however, it is less than 1, it does converge to 0. Now, the trivial case when Q is equal to 1 is not really interesting because then we will have A, 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 A. It's a constant and the limit would be obviously A. All right, so forget about this case. I would also like to forget the negative cases because they are exactly the same as positive, so I will do the proof for only positive A and Q just to make it easier with all these inequalities. And I will prove that if A and Q are positive and if Q is greater than 1, it diverges, it's not converging, but if it's less than 1, it converges to 0. All right. so. Let's say Q is greater than 1. Now, what I would like to prove right now, that my uh, member of the geometric progression will be greater than any number at a certain point, whatever I you know, choose as a limit. Let's choose L as a limit. And again, let's say delta is the distance from the limit. 
and I will prove that it will be greater than this at some point. So I will find the end when this member will be greater than. Now, how can I find it? Well, very simply. Number one, I will divide by A. And again, we have assumed that everything is positive, so I don't will really have to flip the sign. So L plus Q over A less than Q to the nth degree. Now, you should remember, uh, if, if you don't, that's OK. I'm just telling you that uh, the function called logarithm graphically looks like this, log x. Let's say it's by base 10 or by base 2. It doesn't really matter which, what, what kind of logarithm we are using. This is x. This is y. This is 0. It looks like this. And it's monotonously increasing, which means if we will apply logarithm to both sides of equation uh, of inequality, we will, get sim we will get similar inequality with logarithm. Because if monotonous function is applied to uh, inequality, inequality stays. So log of L plus delta over A is less than log of Q to the nth degree. Now, Q to the nth degree, again, that's the property of logarithm. Logarithm of uh, a power is a power times log X, a log Q, which means I can find N from here by dividing both sides by log q. Now, here is very important. You see, log is positive when my argument is greater than 1 and negative when it's less than 1. Now, we can assume that q is greater than 1. So log is positive, so I can just divide without changing the sign. And what I have, I have n greater than 1 log over another log. This is a solution. These are invariant transformations, which means that as long as my number n is greater than whatever this number is, my a q to the nth degree would be greater than m l, l plus w, no matter what l and w I, w I choose. Which means that my member of the geometric progression is further from any limit than, than delta, which we have chosen. Which means that L cannot be a limit in the story. All right, now, what if Q is less than 1? OK, if it's less than 1, I claim that 0 is a limit. All right, let's check it out. Let's take any delta greater than 0. And if 0 is a limit, I have to find such a number n that if n greater than capital N, absolute value of a q to the n should be less than delta. Right? That's what it means. Because, well, I can put 0 minus delta absolute value, but that's also the same thing. And I don't really need absolute value here. No matter how small delta is, considering they're all positive, we have started from the beginning, right? A is positive, Q is positive, but less than 1, and delta is positive. So delta is some small number, 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 thousandth, doesn't really matter. But it will be less than this delta after certain n. Now, let's find n. Let's just solve this inequality. Again, first we divide by a. So q to the n less than delta over a. Now we will log both of them. Logarithm q to the n less than logarithm delta over a. Now, uh, again, this is n log q. And I would like to divide by log q, right? But log q is negative now, because q is in this particular interval. And you see, if q is in this particular interval, its logarithm is less than 0. It's negative. So dividing by negative, I have to reverse the inequality. And what do I have? I have uh, n 
greater than log delta over A divided by log Q. So this is the boundary. So any uh, integer n which is greater than this particular number would fit this particular requirement. Because if lowercase is greater than this, then all these uh, transformations are equivalent, which means a q would be uh, smaller than delta, closer to zero than any delta. By the way, if, uh, if a uh, is positive and uh, q is from zero to one, and delta is very small, actually, then both logs would be negative, right? Because this is a very small number. Delta is supposed to be a small close, closeness. It's a distance to zero. So we're choosing it as small as possible. And q is negative. So if you divide it, it you, you, you will have a positive number. So don't get confused that log uh, q is negative. Log uh, delta over a is also negative. So we have some positive number. And obviously, the smaller the delta, considering a and q are constant. The smaller the delta, the less to the negative side log of this particular number would be. So this e is increasing in absolute value while staying negative. And this is negative constant, which means that n should actually be greater and greater. The closer we want to get to 0, the greater n we should choose to be that close. Well, uh, that's it. Uh, I did not really consider negative A's or negative Q's. Uh, they are exactly the same, basically, just based uh, all, all, the, uh, all, all the proofs is, is based on absolute value and reality. So these are not very difficult, but I would say illustri illustri mm, illustrative, I think. <laughs> That's the word. Illustrative, maybe illustrative examples of how to prove that certain number is a limit of certain sequence, or that certain se sequence does not have a limit. Um, it will be a little bit more difficult for the future problems. These are, uh, again, very simple ones. Uh, I do encourage you to, to do all these problems just by yourself. Um, go to the website, unizor.com, and uh, try to solve these problems yourself, just to make sure that you understand them full fully. Uh, Again, as always, I am uh, encouraging you to register uh, as students, to have somebody or maybe yourself register as your supervisor or a parent, um, and uh, enroll in certain classes, take exams. That would quantify your familiarity with all these materials. Thanks very much. That's it for today.